Hello and dwarves, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I've got a Dell Inspiron here. Uh, not 100% certain what number it is, but it's one of these Inspiron 2-in-1 jobs with the touchscreen, yada yada yada. Um, so the power button on this guy has failed. Uh, when you try and press the power button, there's no action there at all. You can't feel any kind of click or anything like that. I had a quick peek at it yesterday when the customer dropped it by and I've already established that the power button is broken and if you manually actuate it then the laptop will turn on and run. So we're going to open this up and I'll show you guys how to resolve that. Then after that this laptop is just in for a service. So uh, I'm going to start out by removing the screw, all the screws on the bottom of the laptop. Um, so I'm using a Phillips Zero screwdriver for this. Then we're going to lift off this bottom panel and um, starting from the back, there's a slight gap at the back of the laptop here where you can get your fingers in and then I can just pop that off with a bit of a wiggle. Um, you might need to use a little bit of prying force to uh, just pop some of the clips out. Um, however, starting from the back seems to be the way forward. So let's take that off. Um, so this laptop has also seen a bit of light liquid damage. We've got some sticky gunk in the heatsink there um, and just around here. But that's I don't believe that's causing us any problems at all. I'm going to clean that up while I'm here, but we'll get back to that in a minute. First of all, we've got the power button over here. It's on a separate board. So if you wanted to, you could probably find one of these on eBay if you went looking for it. And you can unscrew this board with this screw here. And then we can just lift that guy out and it will disconnect from the motherboard down here. So now let's take a closer look at this so we can see how it's broken. So as we can see on the close up, you can see how this tactile button here is just hanging on by sinew and bone and nothing else. So uh, that's our problem. That's our power button. Then also on the board, we've got the two volume rockers as well. Um, so this is the guy that we need to sort. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use an eyeball and just see uh, the legs have snaps, but I think we might be able to flow that back on without having to actually replace it. I don't have any 90 degree right angle buttons, so I'm hoping that I won't need to replace it. And if I just solder this all back down again, um, I think it'll be OK. The actual switch connections at the back um, so these connections at the back, those are the actual signal pins. Those haven't broken off yet. Uh, it's just the anchor points that are broken. So I'm thinking if I resolder that and get the anchor points soldered back down, I think that guy will actually be all right. So let's just see if we can salvage this. So I'm warming up the iron and I'm going to put on just a little bit of flux just to make everything flow a bit easier. And I'm going to put a bit of solder on the back of my iron and just see if we can do something with that. Okay, that guy looks like it's held down. I'm just going to have a look on the bottom and because we've got two anchors at the front and then there is an anchor on each side as well, which I think actually hasn't been soldered on this board. Ah, uh, no, so the side anchors haven't been soldered, but also there's no pads to solder them to. So I can't do anything with those. So the best I can do really is just try and get a big old solder blob around the front of those just to reinforce them as best I can.
There we go. And I think that'll do it. I'll just clean the flux off of this with some alcohol. There we go. And I think that'll be fine. Now, the next question is, am I going to do anything with the volume buttons? Um, and I, I think I'm going to. Um, they're not damaged. I don't have to. However, I may as well, while I'm here, just put some reinforcement on those. So, yeah, as I say, I think this section is really optional. And part of me is thinking I should quit while I'm ahead. However, I may as well just try and add a little bit of reinforcement to those while I'm here. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll stick a little bit of flux around there. And we'll just blob some solder around those front anchor points. Because considering they are load bearing, there is not enough anchoring for those. I'm really not surprised this guy's broken. It's not traveling down to the actual anchor point. Get down there. That blob is just clinging to the side of it, not actually going down to the PCB. Nope, I'm going to try and scrape some solder off there. That's not working. I have to move the camera, it's in my way. That's a good one. That went really nicely. And this one's putting up a fight. I'm just going to do this in my hand. There we go. I often vice things up just so I can give the camera the best possible shot, but sometimes that makes my life harder as well. There we go. So as you can see, I've just blobbed some solder on those guys. And it doesn't look pretty, but because there's a bigger body of metal there, that now means that those have got a lot more work to go before they actually break. So that should help strengthen that against future stress. There we go, that should do. Let's put that back in the laptop. Okay, and let's check the action. That feels good, and the power button, yep, yeah, that works just fine now. Still not a very satisfying action on that. These buttons, they, they don't have a big enough travel on them. So the, the side just, you get very little feedback. You can feel a slight bump, but the button on the side of the laptop, but like, look how flush those buttons are on the side of the laptop. You know, it's a small wonder that someone gets impatient and presses really hard on that because they're just, you know, you can't feel those buttons properly. I appreciate they wanted to make the side of the laptop nice and flat, but there's no feedback there at all. And if you don't give people feedback, they will keep pushing harder and harder until they do get feedback or they see something happen. And for a power button, that's really bad because the other thing, of course, is that a laptop or a computer, it doesn't necessarily do anything the moment you hit the power button. Um, you know, like this one, the fan doesn't spin up immediately either. So, you know, you're pressing the power button and you're not seeing the screen light up or there's no power light on these things, you know. And so obviously the customer isn't getting any feedback. So they're going to keep pressing that button and keep pressing it harder until they see some kind of visual feedback. So that's the problem there. Uh, right, I'm going to disconnect the battery before I um, take the CPU cooler off. 
and there's not a lot of slack on that battery so I'm actually going to physically remove the battery for this bit. Um, I would have done this before doing the power button had I realized I needed to do it anyway but it wasn't super important for the power button. Ooh. Get out. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to remove this um, uh, heat sink just so we can clean that up. I don't think this is causing any real issue to the laptop, but again, I'm just doing stuff while I'm here. This laptop is also in for service. Um, so I'm I'm being paid to make it cleaner and better than it was before. So, you know, I'm going to clean all these bits while I can see it. Right, and I'm just gently wiggling that just until the thermal paste lets go. Okay, so we've got paste on the main core and just a thermal pad on the end. That's kind of interesting. This is a pretty weedy cooling solution, but it's a very low power ch uh, chip anyway. So, yeah. Cool, okay, right. So I'm gonna be applying new thermal paste to this, so I'm gonna get some alcohol on that thermal paste to start breaking that down. Oh, I didn't want to get it on the thermal pad though. Uh, fine, I'm sure it'll be okay. I think thermal pads are resi resistant to uh, alcohol. It'll be fine. Yeah, that thermal pad's fine. Cool, right. And now for the top of the heatsink, where all this sticky stuff is from, like, cola or whatever. Uh, I think it's coke that's been spilt on this. Um, I'm going to use some window and glass cleaner. I could use the alcohol on this as well, but window and glass, uh, because we're just spraying onto metal here, um, there's no electronics or anything that I need to be careful of, and the window and glass will do a bit, it's got a bit more soapy cleaning agenty in it. Whereas alcohol is just a mild solvent, that's all it is. Whereas the window and glass, because it's actually got some cleaning stuff in it, it'll do a better job of shifting the gunk. So when you can use window and glass, I find it's much better. But if you're spraying directly onto a circuit board, alcohol is a safer bet. You can use window and glass onto a bare circuit board. I used to do that all the time. However, if you've got alcohol, that is better for circuit boards. Just because, you know, playing it safe and all that. And the laptop itself, I'm just going to use some alcohol just to clean up some of the schmutz we've got here and that thermal paste. There we go. That little bit of schmutz on the circuit board there, I really don't think that would have been causing any problems whatsoever. But I'm just cleaning it while I'm here. Better for it not to be there. If that's on like a really delicate connector, like the display connector or something like that, I would actually recommend leaving it alone because um, if there's already been damage there, then that connector will probably be holding on through hopes and dreams. And unless you feel brave enough to replace the connector, um, it might just crumble away under your fingertips. Um, so yeah, I've had that happen before. Uh, like with the display connector, someone has seen you know, you've seen there's some corrosion there and you're like, oh, that's got to be fixed, right? As soon as you open that up, it'll just all break. So if the laptop is still working, leave it alone unless you're prepared to actually do the whole fix. If you're just trying to clean and you're not ready to resolder a damaged connector, you're better off not touching it if it still works. If it's broken, of course, then yeah. But yeah, just my two pence there. I mean, it may end up dying of its own accord anyway. However... Uh, better that that happens than you fiddle with it and then it breaks and you can't fix it, so. And I've just given that fan a quick brush down as well. It's still a little bit sticky on top, but that's not going to hurt anyone. I'm just blowing the dust out of it as well. And I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Although, oh, actually that connector, that wants a good clean up. That might cause a problem.
and a little blob of thermal paste onto the CPU. If you've spotted that the red pin on the fan wire is broken, then good job because I did not spot it. However, I did notice this when I actually started servicing the laptop and found that the fan was not spinning. I resoldered these two wire ends back together again off camera, but I'd already finished recording and I didn't want to set up for a recording again. But yeah, this got fixed off camera. A little bit of gunk on the back of the panel. I'll just sort that out as well. And then we're ready to put this guy back on. Okay, right, time for a test drive. Power button press. Battery should have some charge in it. There we go, one Dell logo. Cool, there we go. So uh, the rest of the laptop needs a bit of a clean and then we've got to do a software service on this thing. However, uh, we've got the power button working so it's now reliable, which is the important thing. The customer mistakenly thought that it just wouldn't turn on and I guess they were correct, it wouldn't turn on but it was not because it was a virus or something like that, just something as simple as a broken power button. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.